nothing ever progresses when it's the bland. History will just repeat. You've got to change history and change what the bland is and change what you perceive as good and bad and have flows to it. It's inevitable that we are all different and it's those differences, those cultural differences, those nuances, those things about me that are really special to me. And you think you're not creative, but most people think I'm not creative, but we are. If you're expressing yourself, surely you're not going with the crowd, you're going against the grain. And that's what Blood's about, really. Hello and welcome to the first ever Blab podcast. We are Free Radical and this is the first in a series of sessions hosting live conversations from our base and covering a series of events we are calling Blab, Backlash Against the Bland. Here at Free Radical, we value the importance of being bold and to be bold is to backlash against the bland. So we are hosting a series of events which challenge the original conceptions of what a panel discussion can be. Inviting experts and putting them into scenarios to answer questions that have been posed by our community. So we kicked off on Monday the 30th of July, round the corner at our new mate, Vim. And we hosted the conversation, how do we shake off the emerging label? Who did we have with us? We had Shirley May, poet, mentor, educator, and founder of Young Identity, an activist and poetry collective operating from Manchester. We had Chloe Deakin, filmmaker, photographer, activist, member of Beat Freaks' Bait Collective, and Herculean Visuals' founder. We had Ben Norris, writer, actor, former long distance runner, and long distance award-winning poet. And we had Catherine Butler, performance artist and physical theatre performer and producer based out of Birmingham. And on the night, all of this was pulled together by host Sabi Mudai, founder of Yap, Look Them Up, an activist and social entrepreneur in her own right. Who am I? I'm Bethany Slim. I'm a creative practitioner here at Free Radical and I'll be hosting this podcast series along with guests. You can find out more about our speakers in the description for the podcast and I encourage you to do so. And so, on to the question. How do we shake off the emerging label? Um, I'm a producer-ish person. Um, You're a what, sorry? A producer-ish person. What, what was this? Own it, B. You're a what? Um, okay. <laughs> Moving swiftly on. Um, oh, it shows promise. You know, emerging. You know, they're, they're coming, they're budding, they're flower, they're growing, always growing, you know. Mm. Glass That's how I think about that. myself every day. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just turned around to the other panelists and went, this is hard. <laughs> oh, okay, so I'll answer your question a little bit about emerging. I'm an emerging artist. How do you shake off the emerging label? <laughs> <laughs> so, before we can answer that question, we need to understand what that label means. Who identifies as emerging and there was a lot of conversation on the night about how this label can actually serve to limit you as an artist. Let's have a listen to what Chloe and Ben had to say about that. So, if you, I put up a poll on Instagram asking, what's the emerging label? I got various answers in my DMs about some people were saying you need over 10,000 followers, some people were saying that you need to work professionally for f three years, and some people were just saying that you need to be confident within yourself, like you were saying and just say what you are and be proud and own that you're an artist in your own right. It can be used as a qualifier that is like, this person hasn't made it yet, and I think that, that emerging does have some derogatory connotations. We focused more on the derogatory connotations of emerging tonight than perhaps is healthy, but d it definitely can be throwing a slight bit of shade at someone's where they're at developmentally, I think. As Chloe set out, there are many different definitions and ideas about what emerging actually means, and we found this throughout the evening. 
Is it about the length of time you've been performing, where you're at in your developmental process? Is it about how many fans or followers you have? Or is it about your confidence in your own ability and who uses that label? And how should we treat it? As a mentor, Shirley May has seen many artists move through that label. What does she think about it? Sometimes when people put labels on you, it is to keep you in a specific box. And it's whether or not you want to be in that box or, or you say, I'm not going to be in that box. Yeah. Interesting there is the element in how you decide to use the label or not. And a couple of our panellists had a lot to say about that choice. We hear from Catherine Butler now. How do you shake off that emerging label? You don't say you're emerging. So is that about actually, yeah, knowing your worth, so actually how much I want to charge myself, or is it a permission thing? I give my permission to say that I am an artist and I am confident in saying that and I am a, a, a videographer and all these things. And it's, so it's, for me, that's an interesting thing is actually it's about the confidence to say that. And no one can tell you that, and no scheme can tell you that. You've got to find that in your own way, but obviously then the scheme gives you the opportunity, so it's, it's, a, weird, it's a weird thing. It comes back to that sort of, yeah, I believe I'm an artist, and yeah, I believe in the work that I do, and actually when you're speaking to people and, say, and introducing yourself, and they go, hi, so can you just introduce yourself? So, hi, I'm Catherine Butler, I'm, I'm an artist, I'm a producer, I am a dancer, I am an actor. I am all of these things, but sometimes I lack the permission to say that. Mm. And if you'd have spoken to me like a year ago, I'd have gone, hi, I'm, I'm Catherine. I'm, uh, I, I was a student. Uh, you know, I wouldn't have actually propelled or said anything because I didn't feel it in myself at that time. Catherine brings in a really interesting point there, which is the relationship of experience and confidence. Naturally, if you've been in a field or a position longer than somebody else, you're going to feel more qualified to be able to do your job. Maybe there is an organic point in your journey at which you say, I'm no longer emerging. I've got enough experience on my back to say I'm no longer emerging. But is there comfort to be found in the emerging label when you've not quite reached that yet? If you haven't got a wealth of experience, how can you find that confidence? Shirley May had a lot to say about this. And so one of the things that I said to them about emerging is to find what your value and your worth is because I can't sell you to anybody else or you can't sell yourself to anybody else if you don't know what your value or your worth is in terms of your art. Um, my mother would say know your value and know your worth. So um, do a kind of self-assessment of yourself, whether or not you are 12 or whether or not you are 12 to 53. Um, sit back, look down and write down all the things that you think you are brilliant at, that you are good at, um, the things that you are not so good at and that you're not so brilliant at, um, and just kind of paint a picture of yourself, get to understand who you are. Also, do a skills audit. So if you're working with, I don't know, say my young people who work with me, how many plays have you done? How many um, shows have you been in? And are you a part of the um, development program of the theatre that you might be working with or an art studio? And if you're not involved with anybody and you're a solo artist, still put, still assess who you are and what you think that you have to offer. You could say, move on from the value of what that label means to the value of yourself and your practice. And let those skills speak for themselves. But this process, can't be the easiest thing in the world can it to be able to look at yourself from a bird's eye view and say this is what I have to offer and so a few of our panelists were really advocating the role of peers in this process <laughs> um, I, I think I've learned a lot by just asking people who were perhaps five or ten years further on than me okay. what would you what would you look to charge as a day rate to go into a school and deliver a yeah. workshop obviously it depends a lot on who's asking, but at this stage in my career, and, and you know, you, you again fostering relationships and and people can help you with that. And uh, yeah, I don't know. I think that's an ongoing question, and it's an ongoing question about the relationships that you forge with people and how people recognise that in you and say, actually, you know, I can see that you need some help here, and I can help you with that. Um, and opening up that conversation, but until they in introduce a business section into degrees or into school or whatever, and everyone takes that, then does anyone know how to file their tax return? I don't. 
I really like the sentiment that during that process um, of self-evaluation and, and knowing your worth that you have to be honest that there are some things maybe you don't know but maybe someone in your peer network does here at Free Radical I know we really value the support of our peers and people around us don't be afraid to reach out and ask Maybe somebody a couple of years down the line will know the answer to a question which you haven't been taught how to answer yet. I think it's also important to think about the lack of infrastructure really supporting us to be business owners. If you're an artist, then you are essentially running yourself, right? But maybe there's somebody around you that knows how to answer that question. Do you feel that there's an, that the artists who are emerging or established, are they educated enough from a business standpoint, i.e. are they equipped to know exactly how to ask the questions, how to kind of word things in a different mm. way outside of the arts, and what has the arts done to equip our artists to be able to deal with their careers in a business sense? I don't know, I'm going to say a little bit, but yeah, you have to be able to be everything. You're your producer, you run yourself as a business, you're a walking... <laughs> NPO, you're a walking whatever, and you have to be able to talk as such. You have to be telling people about your marketing side, your your administration side. You have to know the ins and outs of that. And I don't think necessarily people have the vocabulary, the understanding, or the skills to really do that sometimes. And that's not as in that's not a fault of anyone's. It's just sort of that's what the experiences have you had that have shaped you at that particular time. As we live in this age now of sort of hyphens, and that can often be seen as something mockable and millennial. Oh, this person's a photographer and an actress, and they run a smoothie company, and you know, who the fuck is this guy? <laughs> and, and actually, I think that the way that the, way that the, the gig economy is going and the way that um, we have to be all the things in terms of uh, brand management is going, that is, uh, that's totally acceptable. And if you own all of those those labels, then then that's fine. Degree programs and I did I did an English degree and then I d went and trained as an actor. And in both of those institutions, we were given a reasonably healthy amount of kind of um, advice mm. about uh, managing our careers as well as the art itself. Um, I think we could probably do more, but I think that's getting better. But mostly, it's been conversations. So let's talk about money. I can bet that about eight out of 10 people when asked what the difference between emerging and emerged is, is pay bracket. Pay bracket. Wait, is anyone else shocked about the fact that artists get paid? Well, exactly. So a range of my 16 have a range of prices. And a lot of the ones who have decided that they are 250 pounds if you want to hire them for 30 minutes, um, a 30 minute sl um, set, are the ones who have actually been with the program for at least seven to eight years and they think that they are no longer emerging and one in particular is started when he was 12 and he is only 21 um, and he's saying I'm not emerging this is my job I'm not going to uni this is my job I'm a poet and I'm a writer mm, poetry niche 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 um, um, people want to give you 40 quid to perform niche um, and one of them went, well, I'm not coming out for less than £110. So we put that down on the list. I'm not coming out for, um, for less than £110. And um, then someone went, well, I think I'm worth 150 quid. And I thought, oh, my God, there's 16 of them. There's already dissension. People are already putting value on what they think they are and what they think they're not. And does that mean that they're still emerging? And will people pay £110? Um, will they pay 150? Will they pay 250? And is it always just about the money or is it about the art? So as a mentor, Shirley May encourages the young artists she works with to consider how much they're going to charge as part of that skills audit, as part of that reflection process. Also, it's important to think about what the value of money is in relation to other factors. Is it paid? And for me, if I feel like I'm not gonna be paid for it, then me, and again, this is not even like a hypothetical say, situation. Me personally, I have to look at how else it will benefit me. And if I don't see a way that that can benefit me or that event can benefit me in performing, then I'm going to say no if it's free. Whereas, you know, if, if, it, if it isn't paid and I still see like a great opportunity there and I see that I can be valued and I can have agency, then I would go for it. So that was Sabine talking through her thought process as work approaches and weighing up the value of exposure or experience to be gained as well as financial gain. However, I think it would be an oversight to not mention that 
different people obviously have different needs and different financial status. And some people may not be able to accept a job just based on exposure. And that's down to you and your agency as an artist. But even as an artist or whatever, I'd still do stuff for free if I feel like it has a purpose for me. It's always about if you feel like it's good for you, then don't be afraid to do stuff for free. Don't be afraid to do stuff for exposure because that exposure can really help in this 2018, trust me. Um, and people keep on saying, oh, I've got a platform for you. The BBC like that. They love platforms. They give you platforms all the time. Um, but they don't necessarily give you money for that platform. Because apparently, they give you five million listeners. And is anybody still listening to the radio? Just FYI, we really hope that people are still listening to podcasts. And if you are, let us know. Follow us on Twitter and please leave your comments on the podcast below. We really want this conversation to keep going. This conversation is not closed and it shouldn't be. So we move now onto the conversation of what the role of organisations, commissioners and gatekeepers are in this self-definition as an emerging artist. Um, so I said I had asked some of our um, young identity members what they thought about being emerging and one of them has texted me, I was wondering how old you have to be when you stop becoming an emerging artist. Um, and there I know artists who are 35 and still when, they s when their CVs are sent out from their agents, their agents are saying that they're emerging even though they've done 20 shows or 30 shows. And so I think it's about, like you said, standing in... in who you believe you are. True. Because some people um, are told that they're established from day one and they're told that they can put themselves forward as a professional. Therefore, they will get professional rates, they will get more jobs and they'll have a higher client base. However, the ones of us that are told that we are constantly emerging and then that we're on the road to being established will often have um, little to no pay and will have less jobs and be less um, respected within our art form. Is there often a tension between the ways we feel about ourselves as artists and the way that we've been interacted with? And what can organisations and artists do to change this? Well, I think I agree with building up a re um, rapport, but at the same time, you've got to look why we don't have a rapport. And that is because we have been, um, a lot of us have been exploited and have been overworked by companies for years. And that obviously causes... Um, anger within the community and natural anger because everyone wants to be paid the fair wage. Right. Chloe was calling for organisational transparency that in her experience is feeling like she is defined by an organisation's decision to pay her more or less but she wants to know what the considerations in that are. On the night we had present Helga Henry who wanted to offer her perspective on how to have open and mutually beneficial relationships with the organisation supporting you. So my name's Helga Henry. I am a board member of um, Free Radical, Beat Preets Arts Limited. And um, I've worked in a number of arts organisations, including smaller festivals, and most recently I was on the senior team at Birmingham Hippodrome. And so I've been in a position where I have commissioned artists and all sorts of suppliers from across the creative and cultural sector and I have supported younger emerging you might call emerging artists and those who are more established mm. and I there is a pay differential mm. but in my mind that's mostly about um, how much support somebody might need to do a good job what results people might produce with or without my support. The less support mm. uh, they need from me, it's possibly the, the higher fee that these people, a person can command. Mm. And that therefore isn't necessarily about age or time in the role, it might be about their expertise in a particular area. I think the discrepancies between Chloe's perspective when encountering organisations and Helga's perspective as a gatekeeper pose an interesting question about how open and honest we should be and how important it is to hold people into account with open dialogue so that people are on the same page in what is expected and why they are being paid what they're being paid. Halga's point also brought up a really interesting counterpoint to the conversation, which is, what are the benefits of being an emerging artist? 
She spoke a lot about the developmental opportunities which could be available to you from in-kind support if you say, yeah, I'm in a process where I'm going to need a little bit more help. I am still emerging. Uh, the fi- yeah, I've kind of already touched on this. The final thing is to enjoy the journey and to enjoy being emerging and actually to take advantage of the fact that when before you reach a point of heightened um, profile, you can fail gloriously and it has far less consequences uh, for your career. I think we should always be allowed to fail whatever stage you're at, but particularly then you're in a kind of lower stakes playground stage. And so don't rush out of that because um, that's the opportunity to, for you to build the artist that you will become. Off of that, I asked Ben how he would recommend we interact with the people who could give us support. Also, disclaimer in the following clip, listen out for our producer Amira as she insists that we really, really do need to get out of the building now. Uh, sometimes it really helps to, to come across extremely confidently uh, and to appear to be established, but oftentimes, it's particularly when you're applying for things or you're um, uh, asking for a development opportunity or you're writing to someone to say request that they maybe mentor you or meet you for coffee like a, a, a hunger to grow and and um, knowing the things that you want to learn is more exciting than someone who says I know everything yeah. certainly if someone writes to me with an arrogance and says I want this from you I'm less inclined to give it to them than if they write and saying like I'm an emerging poet and I would love to ask your advice about X or Y. There's a, there's a you know, a, a, an honest hunger for growth. Yeah, yeah. And, and like I said, in Arts Council forms and lots of theatre opportunities, like the criteria is that you're emerging. Uh, it's, only when it's, it's only when it becomes a barrier to you feeling like you can sit fully in the identity of an artist that, that it's a problem. Largely, I think it, it, it's exciting. We should be seen as exciting more. I really, really love this idea that there's actually some power to be found in the label of emerging. But only if you let it be powerful. Don't let it be a barrier to your own development. Maybe there's an element of us needing to decide what it means ourselves. The term emerging for me is about developing. And we're all emerging then because yeah, we want to develop and we all want to learn all the time and i know that's really like cliche but it is like it is so put your own time scale on it and kind of yeah i feel that at this it. point something really powerful started happening in my own perspectives of what emerging can mean how we shake off the emerging label was a question that was posed because people found that it limited them because somebody else was coming up with that definition of what that label meant so I've kind of got three responses. The first regarding how you shake off the emerging label is that it's arbitrary, it's relative, and often it's not for you to say. Um, I think within uh, as much as we can determine our own position, and if you want to, and it's very helpful to not describe yourself as emerging or aspiring after a certain point because that empowers you and it, it heightens your profile in the eyes of people you know, who stumble upon your Twitter and it doesn't say <coughs> aspiring actor and writer, it says actor and writer, and there's a kind of, there's a fact about that. Um, and that can often become a self-fulfilling prophecy. But at the same time, you will always be emerging, and I think we've talked about how important it is to, to never think that you've arrived. There were people that would have been established artists in some other lifetime, but then this word emerging got created to kind of give people who were younger an opportunity. And then the people that were established then said, well, actually, I want to be emerging because I want to be able to apply for that and all those opportunities. And so it's now this weird sort of um, purgatory where no one really wants to either say whether they're emerging or whether they're established. So emerging as a term is problematic because it, it means different things for different people at different stages and for different areas of where you want to come from. So if I'm going to be speaking particularly about my experience in theatre, maybe, but that might be something completely different for a visual artist or for a poet or for someone in film. How do you feel about the term emerging? Do you feel like you have enough experience? Do you have enough to kind of propel yourself in the world? And what do you need to kind of, in terms of your skill set, in terms of your art, in terms of what do you want to do? In actuality, you, you can have the agency to decide what it means. And you can use this to motivate you. It seemed like the conversation was getting to a point where we realised that old definitions of emerging that you're going to get paid less you're not going to be taken as seriously and you don't have enough experience would indeed limit you if you decide to take that as a definition it's like all labels right 
they mean different things to everyone because we're all different and have different experiences. For example, I label myself as an intersectional feminist, but that means something different to my mom who grew up in the 70s to me now, and will mean a completely different thing to someone who learns the term tomorrow. It keeps changing, but we keep having the conversations to make sure that we're on the same page. Something that I've noticed in all of the um, panelists' conversations was the idea of the value of arts to society that kind of is the, is the main crux of the issue. Because arts might be seen by some as something that's lesser, we're struggling to call ourselves artists, we're struggling to call ourselves as a producer or a dancer because it's not seen as got a high enough status in society. So then when we want to call ourselves emerging, that then lessens that whole idea of being an artist again. Mm -hmm. And I don't think there's anything necessarily wrong with being emerging, but it's the way that we value the arts completely that taints the whole situation. Yeah. Yeah, you're, you're so how you're do you shake off the emerging label? We've chatted about the variation in what emerging means and how challenging that can be. How it can sometimes keep us somewhere we want to move out of. But also how it can be a really valuable opportunity for development. I think what was really powerful about the answers to this question we discussed was it can be up to you what emerging means. As conversations have shown, there are other considerations here, like we interact with and often get paid by people who will have different definitions to us, but that that dialogue can and should be open. You can decide what it means. Evaluate yourself. Find the power in self-reflection. Find what emerging needs to mean for you and hold yourself to that standard. Don't let it be a barrier unless you want it to. Labels mean different things for everyone. It's how you use it, it's up to you. I hope that this conversation has shed some light on the question, both for the people that asked it and also the people that have come to it now. But as I said before, this conversation isn't closed. Please keep interacting with the podcast, ask questions, keep the conversation flowing. As for me, that's it for now from us emerging podcasters. Keep your eyes peeled when the next one will drop. See you soon and keep backlashing against the bland.